This chapter deals with chemicals and several electronic devices that are used to detect different chemicals. This chart gives us the definition of the pH, that H refers to hydrogen and that P refers to the 10 to the negative seventh power, and that pure absolute water has an equal number of positive and negative ions. Notice that acids are more positive and bases or alkalines are more negative and that the two will combine to create salts such as sodium chloride. Here's an interesting table showing the different pHs of different compounds. It's interesting. I always thought that bleach was acidic, but in fact it's alkaline. And what's more interesting is look at beer. And now I see that beer is more acidic. Now I understand why I used to drink pizza and beer and get enough to the stomach. Here's one method of measuring the pH of a solution, but it uses two sensors, a reference and, and then the actual measuring probe, and both are inserted into the fluid that's being measured. And then the object is that the voltage produced by the circuit will change depending if something is more acidic, more alkaline. So you're not really measuring the, the pH, but you're measuring is how much the voltage will change as a result of uh, the different pHs. Suppose we take a measurement of pH and we find that we need to correct the pH. That means that we have to add reagents. That means we need to have a tank or a batch process. So in other words, we cannot have a continuous process, but we've got to have a batch, add chemicals, mix, and so forth. Notice the important words here are influent and effluent. That means you go in to the tank, mix, and then go out of the tank. Here is an attempt at a continuous process to correct the pH. Here what they're saying is that you can mix the reagents. But even so, notice that there's a static mixer. And it just shows you that it's almost impossible to have a continuous project. You must have a little place to do some sort of mixing. Another method of measuring pHs is, is to measure the conductivity. And the concept is that absolute pure water does not conduct electricity, but that the more impurities, the more acids and so forth, that are suspended in the water, that will change the conductivity. And conductivity, as you've noticed, is the inverse of resistance, and it is measuring Siemens. This slide describes a method for measuring pH, but it calls it an electrode probe, and I think that's a mistake. I think you meant capacitive probe. In a capacitive probe, you have two plates, and then depending on what the material is between the two plates, if it's more acidic, then, of course, the capacitance will change and you get a, an idea of what the pH is. With an inductive probe, you're using a transformer action, if you look very carefully at the coils. And then the liquid in which you insert the probe may increase or decrease the uh, magnetic field. And if that's the case, then that means that you can get an idea of what the pH is by the way the magnetic field is changing. This is a table of the conductivity of water. And then once again, theoretically, water does not conduct electricity. But as they increase the amount of uh, impurities in the water, then, of course, the conductivity will change. Of special interest is the pure mountain stream. And then pure mountain stream water might taste good because it has minerals suspended in it. And so it gives it a good taste, but it also increases the conductivity. And then, of course, you add acids into the water, and the, and the conductivity goes up greatly. The key to detecting gases is to measure how well a sample conducts heat. The detector then must have a, a reference and plus a measuring a device. And then what's going to happen when the heat changes is the resistance will change. So if the resistance changes, then the output of the measurement must be fed into Wheatstone Bridge so as to detect how much have you changed in resistance. Gases will also affect light. So one way to detect a gas is to see how much light will change. Notice that there must always be a reference, and then the two things are mixed together to see what color lights, what frequencies are present, and therefore give you an indication of what type of gas you have. Measuring humidity can be difficult because it can vary with temperature, but the basic formula for absolute humidity is that it is the density of water divided by the density of air in a certain sample. Relative humidity varies with temperature. This table shows that the hotter the air is, then it can contain more moisture. And as the temperature begins to drop, then you begin to lose moisture. So the dew point is at that point where a certain sample of air will lose its moisture and it will become deposited on, on all surfaces. 
Here's a sensor for detecting humidity. Notice that you're using gold, and anytime you're using gold, that means you have an expensive device. It just simply shows how difficult it can be to measure absolute uh, humidity. Here's one final device for measuring humidity, and notice the complexity. Once again, you have a reference, but then you also have uh, a Wheatstone bridge. That means you're going to be changing resistance. Once again, it just shows the complexity of, of measuring humidity.